All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, all the person where you're watching this tutorial from. Um, once again, I want to thank you for always being part of this community. I uh, want to especially thank you for subscribing my channel. Um, I'm being grateful, and I hope I've been able to um, pass across the knowledge that you've been looking for all this while on how to make use of Aspen High Simulation Two. Uh, if you're just visiting my channel for the first time, I would advise you try as much as possible to go through my earlier videos. It will really help a lot to um, show you how to go about um, modeling or running a simulation with Aspen Heises. You know, from the beginning of the tutorial, we've handled understanding the basis of um, um, Aspen Heises. We've handled pump compressors. We've also handled um, Pipe segment, to model the pipeline, distillation column, heat exchanger, and a whole lot of things. So it's advisable you go back, go through them, uh, so that you be on uh, at the same uh, what's called on the same uh, start with us. Mm -hmm. All right. So today we'll be considering. Please don't. Pardon me. I have a I have a little cold. All right. Okay. So as I was saying, today we'll be handling. How to model a gas pipe, a gas pipe using Aspen Heises. All right, so that's what we're doing today. So we'll be handling how to model a gas pipe. Now I don't need to go back to how you can add the component list or select free package. All those ones have been handled in the past, so. Um, the gas stream we are working on is methane gas, so just pair of methane, it goes to composition, it's one, and then the conditions, as you can see, 5 degrees Celsius, and um, the pressure is 84 bar, and then the molar flow is 30 uh, million scoff per day, that's a million standard cubic feet per day. So, all these parameters are assumed parameters for tutorial purposes. Okay, but with the idea you get from this tutorial, you'll be able to model a, a real life scenario if you have your parameters. Alright, so what we need to do now, since this um, stream, the major stream has been defined, all we need to do is to select a gas pipe. So if you're using version 11, you see um, a search bar here. So all I need to do is just call over to this place and type gas. So you see a gas pipe. Alright, so I'll just click on it and place it here. Alright, double click. So my inlet, CPC1, my outlet temperature, I'm sorry, outlet stream, I call it 2 or whatever, whatever the temperature you choose to give to it. Now, as you can see here, it's asking for the roughness of the pipeline. Okay, um, you need to know the nominal diameter, the type of um, material you're using. All right, the heat transfer coefficient very important. So, with the parameters of the inlet stream, you should calculate your um, the heat transfer coefficient. All right, because you also need to impute it before this can solve. So, all I need to do now is click on rating and the sizing. All right, so we are assuming a distance of a thousand, a thousand meters, as one kilometer. So, all I need to do, I can just decide to run a thousand meter just run it. Or I can decide to split it 500, 500, mm -hmm. that different segment or different section as the case may be. In pipe segment, it's called segment, in gas pipe, it's called section. All right, so now the length is um, 1000 meter, that's one kilometer, and then um, the elevation um, it all depends on the topography of the land you're laying the pipe. Okay, if the um, elevation is undulating it's going up and down so you have to represent um the figure with either a positive or negative value all right but in this case we're assuming a flat surface so all i need to do here is to impute zero zero meter that means it's a flat surface all right for each session the cell should not be less than 10 so you impute 10 there eh? all right so we select um our pipe schedule. Now, this you can do with hand calculation. Alright, you should be able to know your um, the schedule of the pipe you're using. 
the thickness based on your on the on the pipeline pressure rating. All right, you need to know the pressure rating via calculation using the appropriate um, engineering standards and codes. All right, so I'll have to select schedule 80. Schedule 80. All right. So um, for the material, I will select my steel. Now, also, you need to learn how to use the appropriate standard to select the material for the pipeline. Do you, okay, and this is um, as a result of the kind of fluid you're passing through the pipeline, all right, to avoid corrosion and a uh, whole lot of that. All right, so now we have the roughness, and then uh, we need to select the nominal diameter of the pipeline. So, we just um, use a 10 inch, 10 inch pipeline, all right. Then if I play, then I'll select like the tunnel diameter to the uh let's, this is 10 inch too, so I'll go with 10 inch. So it's asking for heat transfer coefficient. So I'll go straight to the heat transfer region, the ambient temperature, select the ambient temperature of the region where you want to lay the pipeline. Like I said in my previous video on the Nigerian and then uh, ambient temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius, so I'll just like using 25 degrees Celsius. Alright, for the heat transfer, like I said, whatever I'm doing here is for tutorial purpose. So you need to know the heat transfer um, coefficient, or the heat transfer coefficient of the system. That is what we use here. So we're going to be using um, 1000 as a case for it. So this is soft. It's as simple as that. So now you can come over to properties. All depends on your kind of gas if it's a compressible gas if it's a perfect gas so you just select the one um, that suits what you're doing all right so all right so we go straight to performance motion performance under performance i'll click on profile okay so this is what we have on that profile so under the table you have the axial axial length this axial length is um, the total length of the pipeline. You have the pressure, so you see the pressure drop across the pipeline. So the inlet pressure is 84 bar, the outlet pressure is about 3.9 bar, so we have about 0. Point, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about 0. 0.1. Right. Yeah, about 0. 0.1 or something. But then you have your temperature, okay, based on the heat transfer coefficient. All right, so you see this temperature increase across the pipeline. You have the mass flow is the same because there's no leakage um, in the pipeline. The velocity of the fluid, okay, across the pipeline is actually increasing. And then the match number, okay, you know what match number helps you to do? Okay, you need to be able to know that fluid is compressible or incompressible. You have the mass density, the internal energy, then you have the speed of sound, okay? So if you want to go through the plot, you can go to the elevation is zero as you can see it's like the zero the pressure um, decreases across the length and then the temperature moved up um, from five uh, down to about uh, 26 yeah 26 came back to 24 then started maintaining 25 degrees Celsius to the end of the pipeline they have the mass flow so you can keep checking this to see all right, it appears your graph, so it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So, all you need to do is to have your parameters in place, follow this procedure, and you get your, um, the gas height solved. All right, um, once again, thank you very much for um, being part of this community. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and do well to um, talk to those around you about the channel. Um, if you're a student, talk to your classmates. Engineer, talk to your, um, your colleagues that might need this tutorial because we know that this is a very important solution to the oil and gas industry and um, it's really going to help you a lot. So, once again, thank you, thank you for subscribing, and um, expect more videos. Um, thank you very much.